If I've done this correctly, when I plug in our little bonding plug, it won't start a fire. So hopefully that's the goal. Today on the Fastlane car and today on the Tesla Adventure X series, we're turning our Model X into a plug-in hybrid. And we're gonna test and see just what kind of miles per gallon of gasoline we can get in our Tesla. All right, so here is the thing, guys. This right here is our Boreas XT camper. And we're taking it on a thousand mile road trip with our Tesla Model X. And if everything goes to plan, we won't need this generator at all. We're just gonna be plugging into superchargers. But what if things go wrong? I mean, what if we actually do run out of power? We've got the trailer, we're in the middle of a desert. How are we gonna get to the next supercharger? Well, that's where the generator comes in. Think of it kind of as a temporary backup just to get us where we need to go. So, this is gonna be the foundation of our project today, the mobile connector. And typically how this works is, well, it works just like anything else. It's like plugging in your phone or your computer. So you take your standard 120 volt US plug, plug it into the wall like this, and here on the connector, we see some green light. So it's well grounded. The Tesla connector is accepting the power coming out of the wall. We're good to go. And then we take the other end here and plug it into the Tesla. It starts to think, then it flashes green and we're starting to charge. Let's see what that looks like on the inside. Alrighty then, so we are all plugged in here and we can see the car is charging at a rate of three miles per hour, 12 amps and 122 volts, which probably sounds like gobbledygook if you're not into EVs or electricity in general. Let's see if our trailer lights are working. Yep, it's not coming on. Plug this guy in, put our chains on. They're not gonna reach, we're gonna have to chain extend Andre. Yeah, we're not gonna reach. We're, we're gonna need uh, chain extenders. Now, in order to show you what's exactly is in this box, I'm gonna go ahead and introduce Alex Lightman. Alex is our gear guy over at TFL Off-Road. He is our number one leading expert in everything tech and unboxing. We're gonna get to that right now. All right, so let's find out what's inside the box in this Generac GP2200i. So first things first, on top, looks like we have our documentation, so owner's manual, all the stuff the lawyers make you put in right there. We do have oil, so 10W30 right there. Good to go. The only thing we're probably going to need to get is gasoline. And we've got this accessory bag right here. Let's open it up and see what we get. So funnel for filling our oil. That's handy right there. Don't need to be messing with paper homemade funnels. They give you everything you need. This seems to be some kind of toolkit. So we've got a screwdriver that is reversed end, so flathead and Phillips. And then this looks like uh, probably a spark plug socket. So they're really giving you everything you need to maintain it as well. And it looks like we have some wires in this bag. So let's see what kind of wires they give us. Looks like a set of jumper cables, so 12 volt right there, that'll go into the generator. Some pretty small battery clamps, but it looks like they'll work just fine. And it looks like the generator should be right under here. Toss the box on the floor, and here we go. So, here it is. Pretty simple design. This is our gas fill right here. Looks like just a regular cap there, and then there's a vent for gas venting, so on and off right there. Control panel is all up on the front. So here is the off, run, and choke position. You have three LED lights for showing how the engine's running. It also gives you a low oil warning if you're running low on oil. 12 volt right there, that's where those jumper cables would go into. You've got a fuse right here, single USB port right there. And then you have some parallel controls right here. So you can pair two of these generators together and double your power. We're not gonna be doing that, but they give you the option right there if you need to. Right there is our 220 volt US plugs. And then we have an economy mode. So it's just a rocker switch under this rubber panel. 
uh, and that will basically lower the RPMs, make it a bit quieter. And over on this side, here's our engine start. So pull that and it'll get you going. A little bit of instructions up top here in case you forget how to operate the unit. You can go through step by step and get it running. Oil fill is behind this panel here. And you can access the spark plug right through that top door right there. Right here is the oil fill and I'm gonna fill it with the included bottle of oil. My one complaint is that they actually give you too much oil. I've seen other small motor appliances like power washers come with a pouch that had exactly the amount of oil you need to fill up. They give you extra here so if you start to burn through some you do have a little bit extra but it takes a little bit more effort to actually fill it up. So I'm gonna have to check the level every once in a blue. It will take a little bit longer than if they just included the right size pouch. All right, I'm gonna fill up the tank. I'll take off the vented cap. This has a 1.2 gallon tank. I'm not gonna fill it up all the way just in case things don't go how we want them to go but we'll just throw a little bit of gasoline in here so we can fire it up. Okay, so let's start the generator up. The first thing, we have to make sure that this is in the choke position, which it is, that's all the way clockwise. Then we'll take the starter. I'm just gonna give it a few gentle pulls to get the oil circulating. Let's do like one or two more. And then I'll give it a good yank, see if it starts up. It's not starting on choke, so we'll just skip that and go right to the run position. Let's give this a go. Fired right up. Might be a little bit hard to hear me right now, but flip it into economy mode. RPMs drop a little bit. Generator gets really quiet. Before we plug in the Tesla, let's make sure it's actually putting out power. So I have this little work light. Should go on as soon as I plug it in. There we go. We do have power. We're gonna try and figure out how many watts the Tesla requires to charge. And a watt is simply just a measurement of power. Let me give you some examples. A radio may draw 220 watts, a coffee maker 600, and then a hairdryer, quite power hungry, 1200 watts. Now let's see how many watts the Tesla is drawing and we can actually figure that out with just a simple equation here on our board. So to calculate watts, we simply multiply volts by amps. So at 120 volts and at 12 amps, which is roughly what the Tesla was charging, we'll need 1,440 watts of power, essentially. Now, watts is just essentially a snapshot. It's not over time. So what this means is that whatever we charge our Tesla with has to generate at least 1,440 sustained watts. And this is kind of where things get a little bit tricky because it's easy to find a generator that will charge at over 12 amps, 120 volts, and 1,440 watts. But the generator needs to do a couple of specific things. If it's gonna charge at all, first of all, it needs a clean sine wave. And what that means is it needs clean, consistent power. So a lot of cheaper generators will have a modified sine and it just won't work. The output has to be a clean sine wave and that is constant power. And this apparently is a generator that's gonna provide that. Now, in order to get a clean sine wave, you essentially need an inverter generator. And that's what this Generac is. Now there are several inverter generators on the market, but you need one other requirement that this Generac is supposed to meet specifically. And that is it has to have a ground that works with a Tesla. So for example, the Honda units, you have to run an adapter that bridges the neutral and the ground prongs. The Generac is supposed to do that automatically. So we've got, a, in theory, a clean sine wave and a ground that the Tesla charger will accept. Now, if these little lights here turn green, we're good to go. If they flash orange, we've got a ground issue or some other issue with the power supply. So open this up here. I'm gonna go out of economy and plug it in. Looks like we've got green lights. There's only one way to find out. Let's plug it into the car. Now, if I click this little pop-up menu and go to charging, we see a bunch of different options, including the current. It's set to 12 amps. I'm actually gonna lower it down right here 
down to about five amps is the lowest, so we don't overload the generator straight off the bat. We're gonna build up to 12 though and see if we can keep up. Plugging it in, turns blue, oh, red. So there's a connection error somewhere. Blue, red, yeah. It's not charging the car, so somewhere either the sine wave is bad or we don't have a positive ground. We've got a little warning up on the dash that says equipment fault, and then it goes ahead and says inadequate equipment grounding, which is interesting because we've read that the Generac actually does work with Teslas. We've seen videos of it, but maybe not this specific model. So I think it's time to go back to the drawing board. Wah, wah. Alex is behind the camera and we are pulling up to our local hardware store to get something called a bonding plug. And essentially, is on the left. thanks Tesla, essentially what it does, it uses a, a little resistor to essentially fool whatever you're plugging in to the device to, that, to make it think that there's a ground there. Um, when there really isn't, which sounds kind of sketchy, but it's supposed to work if I can find one. So let's see if that happens. Hey, look, I'll park next to this other Model X. We'll go figure our local hardware store did not have the bonding plug we needed. So naturally, the next thing you do is drive out to Camping World, which is an hour and a half round trip because they don't answer their phone and they also didn't have a bonding plug. So now it's where we get a little bit creative. We're gonna make our own. I'm not sure this is gonna work whatsoever, but a bonding plug is just a simple device here. You've got the male end of your standard three prong connector, and all I did was hot wire the ground to the neutral, hopefully correctly. And what this is gonna do is hopefully ground our generator so the Tesla will charge. So I'm gonna seal this plug back up. We're gonna plug it in and then see what happens. All right. There we go. So, if I've done this correctly, when I plug in our little bonding plug, it won't start a fire. So hopefully that's the goal. And plugged in. All right, moment of truth. I've got the mobile connector. Let's see what happens when I plug it into the, bo the bottom plug. Let's see what we get here. Now, you can see here we've got little Tesla lines there in green. And before we were getting a red flash, which meant there was a grounding issue. So actually, guys, this might work. We may have just solved our issue. All right, so take two, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna go into the charging settings and dial it back down to five amps. Let's see if we can get this thing to charge. Okay, we got blue. Come on green, oh, we got green. I think we're charging. You can hear the generator strain just a little bit. Let's check out what it says on the screen. Okay, so we are officially charging. 124 volts, 123 volts, five out of 12 amps. So let's see what happens when we dial up the current a little bit. Let's do seven. Okay, so now we actually see some movement. So we're charging at two miles per hour there. Seven out of 12 amps, let the generator settle. We're still holding a constant 123 in the voltage. Oop, oop, the generator seems to be uh, sputtering and it died. Bummer. So at seven amps, we did have the generator kind of conk out on us, but I did have this issue before actually with this generator. If you let it run for sustained times when it's not entirely warmed up, it seems like it wants to, to, to die and it seems to kind of surge a little. So we'll try it again, hopefully get some temperature in it. If not, we can potentially play with a little bonding plug a little. It just doesn't sound very healthy. Okay, so we're gonna wait for it to get some heat into it and then we'll try plugging the car in and hopefully it'll, it'll keep charging. Our generator seems to be running a little bit happier. Dialed it back to five amps. There we go. Okay, so it's been going for a couple minutes now. We are charging steady at five amps. Let's up it to seven. Okay, you can hear the generators under a little bit more load there, but still charging only between a mile to two miles per hour, which is quite slow. Okay, we're gonna let it settle. Let's try eight. Seems pretty happy at eight, holding a steady 123 on the voltage. About nine. Once again, you can hear the generator surge a little bit as it is under more load there, but it's running better now. I think it's warming up. We also have to break this unit in as well. 
still two miles an hour, about 10. Okay, we're up to three miles an hour there. 122 volts, so we dropped a little, but we're still between 122 and 123. Let's go to 11 amps. Uh, you could just hear it increase in RPMs there. And lastly, 12. So at 12 amps at 121 volts, let's do a quick bit of math. 12 times 122, we should be drawing 1,464 watts, which is well within the generator's capacity. But hey, it's charging. Now what if, let's see how long it would take to do the minimum daily charge. Let's, let's see, uh, let's let it calculate there for a second. 17 hours remaining to go to about 50% battery charge from 114. So it's definitely not very fast, but in an emergency, this could work. So it may seem kind of counterproductive to be charging our electric car up with good old fashioned dinosaur oil here, but there's actually a reason behind our man is because if you ever get stuck in a remote situation and you're towing a trailer like we are, for example, imagine how much the tow bill would cost, how long it would take. This could get you the last couple of miles to a campsite or to a standard electrical plug. But the question is, what kind of MPG can we get in our Tesla? So that means how much charge can we put into the batteries? How many miles of range can we put into the car on one gallon of gas? So we're gonna fill up the Generac to one gallon and let it run and see how much range we gain. So we're starting our test here with 35% battery or 114 miles. Let's see how many miles we can add to that 114 with one gallon of gas. Here we go on our mileage test. So firing it up. Economy mode is off. So one gallon of gas in the generator. Let's go ahead and plug in the Tesla. Just like that, we're charging. Now I'm gonna up it to 12 amps and we're gonna let this thing charge. And once the gas runs out entirely on the generator, we'll come back and see how much mileage we put back in the car. All right, so we finished our testing and we let it go. And after about three hours, we came back to the Tesla and it wasn't charging. In that three hours, we did bump our range up 12 miles. It went from 114 to 126. The generator never actually shut off. The Tesla just stopped accepting power from it. So we're gonna have to do a little bit more research into this. We're not sure exactly why the Tesla stopped accepting a charge. All right, Alex, so what have we learned? Is this like a permanent charging solution? Definitely not. We know that no one's really charging their Tesla with a gas generator, but we're about to do a long road trip with the Tesla and hopefully if we need to, that will get us out of the pinch. Yeah, so even though we had some kind of fault, three hours of charge still resulted in 12 miles, which probably would get you at least to the nearest charger. Exactly. You know. Well, as always, this has been Tommy. And Alex. Go back to tflcar.com where next time, me and my dad will be towing this Boreas XT travel trailer all the way to Oregon, and then you and Andre are towing it back. Yep, good luck to both of us. Yeah, really. See you next time.